Hello, welcome to the session. We have been discussing the nonlinearities in the charge pump, and one of the nonlinearity in the our modeling is that we completely uh, forgot the effect of sampling in our charge pump. Okay, so let us see what it is. So what we have is, if you look at it. In our PFT based PLLs, we measure the phase error at we measure our phase error only once in reference frequency, is not it. So, we give this up and down pulse and uh, we have charge pump so far so good and this are C1, C2, VCO and so on. So, when both the the way we model our PFT plus charge pump was that whenever you have phase error, you have phi reference and you have phi output. Whenever, whenever you have phase error, the phase error between reference and output, it gets subtracted by the PFT and converted by the charge pump and you get current which is proportional to phase error, right. That is how we model, but what happens is actually not this. What happens is when you have phase error between PFT and charge pump, the current comes at the output only once in a reference frequency. If the phase changes between the input and the output during the reference period, right that particular phase error is going to be whatever phase error you accumulate that phase error is going to be entertained in by the PLL loop only during the next reference cycle. So, if I want to write it is like PFT operates only on positive edges of or rising edges of the clock. It does not operate in between, okay. It operates like this. There is no feedback. Once you get the rising edge on the reference and the rising edge on the VCO, once you get this, this phase error is in once this phase error is taken into account. After that, even if the VCO phase VCO frequency drifts or anything happens there, there is no feedback between two positive edges. Okay. So, if your V edge has changed here because of this you are changing then it is like until the next V edge comes you are not going to do anything. Okay. Whatever happens to the VCO. Another thing is there is you can say a one reference clock cycle delay. You change anything in the charge pump, right. Uh, if there is any disturbance or anything in the charge pump of PFT, it is going to be if it happens during the current reference cycle or during before the uh, rising edge on the reference or the output clock it will be taken into account. Otherwise, if it happens after that, it is going to be taken into account only in the next reference clock cycle. So, there is like a one reference clock cycle delay. Okay. So, what we are doing in our modeling is the following that what we are doing so far, we are actually sampling our system in the, uh, in the real PLL. Right? We are not having if you look at it I means I did approximations initially using z domain transfer function writing difference equations and so on, but those were approximations. Okay? When you look at your actual PFT what we are doing here is the following. We are having our reference phase and our output phase 
and or output or divided phase if there is a frequency divider and whatever value it gives right. We are sampling this effectively what we are doing is we are sampling in our system at reference rate. Our actual model is or you can say a model which is closer to our parallel operation is this rather than this. This is not the exact model ok. The exact uh, more accurate model is this one. You can get phase error, but I will sample the phase error uh, only at the reference rate right. So, when you have such kind of PLL uh, in the system, so what uh, field which you are using, so let me just uh, uh, do it how we will analyze or can we still continue with our modeling which we have been using ok. So, let me just remove this and say a more accurate model for our PLL is the following where you can have the phase error between input and output or the reference and the output. it gets multiplied by your gain by your PFT gain KPD right. It gets multiplied and you can have your charge pump ok and this is actually a sampled version. So, you sample at reference rate by your reference clock you get from your PFD you have the phase error then that particular whatever input and output phase error you have phi output by the way this is out here rather than VCO. You have phase error between reference and output that particular phase error your PFD gives a proportional value right and that particular phase error is sampled and it is sampled at the reference rate and this is something which we have seen. We ignored it at uh, that time, we approximated it, but now it is the time to see uh, how far our approximations were valid. So, what happens here is in this particular case your ICP changes only at fixed intervals and that is how you change your control voltage and so on. So, there are multiple uh, or you can say a couple of methods to analyze such kind of systems ok. Uh, one of the methods is impulse invariance method to analyze such a PLL. There is an important conclusion after this uh, uh, our discussion. So, let us look at it how we arrive at that conclusion. Impulse invariance method in this method you can say I want to find the loop gain of this system. This is like you have uh, uh, R and C right and you have a sample value. So, what you will do is you will apply an impulse right and you do all sampling and everything and you see what comes back in time domain ok. So, when you apply any change at the input and you see what comes back in time domain that is effectively what you are doing here is you are calculate you are looking at samples time domain samples of the loop gain samples of loop gain and that is something which you are calculating using the exact operation ok. So, you calculate time domain samples of loop gain I will say that they are loop gain of T ok and you pick up samples pick samples at regular intervals from this uh, because loop gain of T when you are going to apply an impulse you will have an actual uh, you will have a real signal as a function of time for example, just to tell you if I have uh, 
loop gain this is just a loop gain of t in my real system right what i am going to do is i am going to sample that at fixed rate which is my t ref okay because that is what is happening in the system i am sampling my loop gain uh, signal at fixed intervals t so pick samples for loop gain of t at t equal to n times t ref okay so you get the samples for the loop gain at n times t ref now you have discrete loop gain samples at t equal to n times t ref these samples i can use to calculate loop gain of z okay so you calculate loop gain of z so this is going to be a uh, z domain for the loop gain and then you analyze your uh, closed loop uh, system so when i go ahead and do all such things you will be surprised that the actual loop gain expression in our case using making sure that the sample values are from uh, the actual system the loop gain of z is going to be k times z square into c1 into 1 minus a divided by c1 plus c2 plus 2 pi by r c1 omega ref omega ref is your reference frequency right this is the coefficient of z square minus z times c1 into 1 minus a divided by c1 plus c2 plus 2 pi r c1 omega ref times a okay well uh, you can always refer to the papers which was published this z cube minus z square times 2 plus a plus z into 1 plus 2 a minus a okay and here a is equal to exponential of minus omega p3 t ref uh, omega p3 is same uh, 1 over r c1 by c2 c1 c2 plus c1 by c1 plus c2 and k is equal to kvco times icp r c1 divided by omega ref into c1 plus c2 okay so by while using the sampled values of the pll and finding the loop gain from there the loop gain happens uh, appears to be like this this loop gain we were earlier earlier we were approximating as just to tell you how simple we were using icp over 2 pi kvco over s square c1 plus c2 into 1 plus s pi omega z divided by 1 plus s by omega p3 this is what we were using but the actual expression is this okay now you can very well find the bandwidth while using these omega z transfer function what you are going to see is the following first if f ref by f bandwidth or you can say unity gain frequency for the pll loop so we have found earlier omega u okay so let me write it this way omega ref by omega u right if this is greater than equal to 10 okay then our 
laplace domain or continuous time laplace domain or continuous time analysis analysis holds to a good approximation and we have verified this by look getting the actual plot or the response comparing your Laplace domain response with your discrete time modeling. As omega ref by omega u reduces, okay, omega ref by omega u reduces that can only happen when omega u increases in comparison to omega ref. When omega ref by omega u reduces and approaches values lesser than equal to 3.5, these are the calculations which you will see, lesser than 3.5, you will find that the systems becoming unstable. The system starts becoming unstable and what happened is that you will start seeing uh, the closed loop uh, poles in the z domain analysis uh, going outside unity gain circle, okay, which is the condition for instability. So, as you see, the condition for instability in case of uh, Laplace domain or frequency domain analysis, Laplace domain analysis is that you have poles in the right half plane. Similarly, in uh, z domain analysis, if the poles are outside unity gain circle, then the system will be unstable. So, as this ratio of your omega ref by omega u reduces, then what you will have is uh, that your uh, uh, output frequency, uh, that your poles will start going outside unity, close loop poles start going outside unity gain circle and your, you will lose on the stability. So, as a rule of thumb now, I will not say that if your uh, unity gain frequency exceeds omega ref, then your PLR will become unstable. No, that is not the case. In uh, many implementations, we have, uh, we can implement our omega u greater than omega ref by 10. We have implemented omega ref by 8 and even uh, higher, right. But the thing is, the matching between our this transfer function and our discrete time transfer function will not be there anymore, okay. So, if you are implementing your uh, PLL with unity gain frequency, uh, which is less than equal to f ref by 10, uh, f ref by 10, you can very well be assured that your continuous time analysis or Laplace domain analysis is quite accurate to model this sampled system. If your reference frequency, if your unity gain frequency, if omega u is greater than omega ref by 10, right, accurate modeling requires z domain analysis, okay. Please do not use Laplace domain analysis. Uh, or the continuous time analysis which we have done, okay. If uh, omega ref omega u uh, becomes much larger than omega ref by 10, okay, or it approaches you can say even omega ref by 2 or something, the PLL will become unstable. PLL shows instability because your closed loop uh, poles go beyond the unity gain circle, okay. So, keeping this in mind, we will design our PLS, okay. Thank you.